Believe me, my dear Miss Elizabeth, that your modesty adds to your other perfections. But you can hardly doubt the object of my discourse, however your feminine delicacy may lead you to dissemble. For as almost as soon as I entered the house, I singled you out as the companion of my future life. <laughs> but before I am run away by my feelings on this subject, perhaps it would be advisable for me to state my reasons for marrying. Mr. Collins. <clears throat> my reasons for marrying are, first, that I think it a right thing for every clergyman to set the example of matrimony in his parish. Secondly, that I am convinced it will add very greatly to my happiness. And thirdly, which perhaps I should have mentioned first, that it is the particular recommendation of my noble patroness, Lady Catherine de Bourgh. Mr. Collins, she said, you must marry. Choose properly, she said. Choose a gentlewoman for my sake, and for your own, let her be an active, useful sort of person, but not brought up too high. Find such a woman as soon as you can. Bring her to Hunsford, and I will visit her. And your wit and vivacity, I think, must be acceptable to her, when tempered with the silence and respect which her rank will inevitably excite. <laughs> yes. So much for my general intention in favour of matrimony. Now, as to my particular choice. My dear cousin, being as I am to inherit all this estate after the death of your father, I could not satisfy myself without resolving to choose a wife from among his daughters. And now, nothing remains but to assure you in the most animated language of the violence of my affections. Mr. Collins, please. To fortune, I am perfectly indifferent. I am well aware that 1,000 pounds in the 4% is all you may ever be entitled to, but rest assured, I shall never reproach on that score when we are married. <laughs> you are too hasty, sir. You forget that I have made no answer. Let me do so now. I thank you for your compliments. I am very sensible of the honor of your proposals, but it is impossible for me to accept them. <laughs> I am by no means discouraged, indeed not. I understand that it is usual with young ladies to reject the addresses of the man they secretly mean to accept when he first applies for their favor, and therefore I shall hope my dear cousin, to lead you to the altar before long. Upon my word, your hope is an extraordinary one in view of my declaration. I was perfectly serious in my refusal. You could not make me happy, and I am convinced I am the last woman in the world who could make you so. My dear Miss Elizabeth, my situation in life, my connection with the noble family of de Burgh are circumstances highly in my favor. You should consider that it is by no means certain that another offer of marriage may ever be made to you. You cannot be serious in your rejection. I must attribute it to your wish of increasing my love by suspense in the usual manner of elegant females. I assure you, sir, that I have no pretensions to the kind of elegance which consists in tormenting a respectable man. I thank you for the honor of your proposals, but to accept them is absolutely impossible. My feelings forbid it in every respect. Can I speak plainer? Oh, you are uniformly charming. And I am persuaded that when sanctioned by your excellent parents, my proposals will not fail of being acceptable. 